So I just want to move on to this reduction case because it highlights a couple of other issues that I alluded to earlier. Uh, I'm assuming you're all pretty familiar with, with the problem here of, of parallel reduction. You know, typically, say you have a, a large sequence of numbers and you want to sum them all up. So the sequential version of doing that is at the top of the slide. It's pretty trivial and not worth discussing. Uh, the problem then is how can I in parallel sum up a whole bunch of numbers? And that's a pretty typical uh, programming assignment for intro CUDA courses. So I imagine many of you have actually written some code to do this, in fact. The way to think about this is a little different than the, the earlier sparse matrix problem I was talking about. Because here, you know, there are well-known techniques that you can just take a block of numbers and in parallel sum them up with sort of a summation tree. So in this case, I think it actually makes sense to approach the problem as, what can I have a single thread block do? And then how do I combine results from different thread blocks? So uh, here is kind of a sketch of how, if I have a thread block where every thread is holding a single value, how would I sum up all the values? You can sum them up in essentially a tree style. You do pairwise additions at each level. And uh, the, the active threads, the number of active threads is going to reduce by a factor of two in each step. And in the end, one thread is going to get the final result. This is actually a diagram of some code that's, that's in our CUDA SDK. And the code that implements that summation tree looks like this. Um, it, it's a fairly sort of typical kind of CUDA program, right? You, you compute your index to figure out what value you're processing. You have these loops that uh, go through each stage of that summation tree. And then in each one, you grab one partial sum from someone else, add it to your own result, and write. And then you have a barrier between each step. Again, if you look in the SDK, you'll actually see this. something looks very much like this code. And there's a little white paper describing exactly how to get to this code. So I want to talk about, you know, given this code, which is sort of a fundamental building block that, assuming I have one value per thread in a thread block, can sum them all up and produce a result. How can I take that basic building block and leverage it into a computation to sum up some arbitrary number of elements in memory? So first of all, um, one thing you should think about when thinking about problems like this is, can I make this generic in a useful way? I would claim that a lot of kernels like this are actually a lot more useful if you use the fact that CUDA does, in fact, support templates and allow them to take some kind of function object, which means that you can use them for something other than just addition. Right? You could use them for multiplication, or max, or min, or, or any other suitable binary operator. As long as, as long as op, this function object I'm passing in, is commutative and associative, this code works correctly. OK, so as I said, the fundamental question here is, how do I take a bunch of blocks and coordinate their activities to get the right result? And one obvious way to do this is to essentially apply the same kind of tree-like reasoning. I said that I, this code I just showed you assumes that every thread has one value. So a thread, a thread block with b threads is given b values. So one thing I could do is say, well, I've got n elements. I'll divide them up into tiles of size b. And then I will give a single b element tile to every one of my thread blocks. That'll produce a bunch of partial sums, namely n over b. And then I'll just repeat this pattern every time dividing the number of partial sums by b. And that will take log n base b steps. And if b is something on the order of, say, 256, that's not very many steps. This is a pretty typical thing. Um, it's actually not the best thing to do in this particular case, though. It's actually excessively parallel. A better thing to do is this. Well, let's just say I, I pick how many blocks I'm going to have. And I will just divide up all my elements equally amongst those blocks. Produce one partial sum per block. And then I'll have a single block sum up all the partial results and generate the final sum. That takes two steps, not, not log n steps. And as long as I'm careful that I pick the number of blocks, which I'm calling p in this case, uh, p for processor, as long as I pick p to be big enough that it's actually going to fill up the machine, 
So as long as I pick it to be, say, 400 or some you know, reasonable size. Uh, this will actually outperform this, this tree-based log n uh, coordination. And there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, um, I need a kernel that's going to, for a single thread block, sum up some arbitrary number of elements. And I'm calling that, that piece of code this sum array code. And again, uh, you don't need to pour over this right now. You can look at it later. But fundamentally, the strategy it's using is this. If it's given an array with lots of elements, it picks up, it, it, first of all, it keeps a running sum at the top, which you'll see is initialized to 0. Then it loops over the tiles of data. So it picks up the first B elements, and every thread sums its value into its running sum. And then it picks up the next B elements, and every thread sums its element into its running sum. And then at the end, it makes a call to, uh, well, I guess in this case, I have it called scan, but it could call reduction, <laughs> uh, to compute the total sum of all the elements in the block. So this is, this is good for one main reason, and that is that with things like reduction and scan and computations of that sort, it's frequently good to maximize the amount of sequential work per thread you're performing. It's actually pretty cheap to keep a running sum in a single thread, which is what this code does. It's relatively more expensive to coordinate a bunch of parallel threads to sum up values in parallel. So what this is doing is, in fact, one sequential reduction per thread across the block, and then only at the end does it in parallel sum up all the values between all of them, and then, then finally uh, return the result. So the, the code that, that uses that to perform reduction is, is this kernel I'm showing you right here, which is, you know, it just figures out, all the, all the boilerplate at the top is just to figure out what part of the array am I going to process, and then it just passes that part of the array to the, the code I just showed you, and then one thread will write the result at the end. So to go back to my, my earlier diagram, the way this would work is I just pick I know n, I pick p, I fix my block size to be whatever I want, say 256 or something like that. And then I call this sum kernel with the appropriate values. It will produce one partial sum per block, write them out. And then I just call it again with one block instead of p blocks and give it the array of partial sums that I just created in the first step. And once I've done that, it's over. I don't have to keep iterating through all the levels of this summation uh, tree. And as I said, this is almost always better in, term, in, in the sense that it's more efficient than uh, something that does this log n summation tree. So here's the, the host code that does that. Right? It picks some thread block size. It decides how many thread blocks to launch. This particular case, I just decided 500 is a good maximum. When am I ever going to need more than 500? Uh, and then it just launches that kernel twice. Once to sum up all the blocks of data, and then once to sum up the partial results. And then, of course, conveniently neglects to return the result to anybody, so all that work is wasted. <laughs> um, so there, there are, of course, ways to improve that code. I'm not claiming that it's optimal. I wrote that code in a way that it would fit reasonably on, on slides rather than be the most well-tuned code. There are various ways that you could make it better. Uh, one is, of course, that when writing such codes, it's important to pay attention to what you're assuming about the operator. You know, I told you that I assumed that it was associative and commutative. I also happened to assume it had an identity, because if you notice, there was a previous slide that said sum equals 0. In fact, I, I assumed it has an identity 0. Um, and you need to be careful about that because the fewer of those that are true, the more careful you have to be about the way you write the code. Writing uh, prefix sums where you only assume the operator is associative and you don't assume it, it has an identity is harder than writing a summation kernel where you assume it's commutative, the identity is zero, and it has an additive inverse, I would argue. Uh, and of course, there's many opportunities for code optimization. I, uh, I listed a couple on this last slide. Uh, it's almost always a good idea, if you're trying to achieve high performance, 
to have some statically fixed block size and do loop unrolling. So you know that, you notice in the, uh, the per block reduction I showed you, there's a loop where the bounds are a function of the thread block size. If I know the thread block size, I can unroll that loop and I will almost always get better performance as a result. Um, you'll also notice that the way I set up the problem, that fundamental per block primitive uh, leaves a large number of threads unutilized. You know, at least half the threads are idle in each step of that reduction tree chart that I showed you, if you go back and look at the illustration. That's obviously bad if at, at best half your threads are doing any work. Right? You'd prefer that all of them are doing more work. Uh, you might be able to utilize some lower level optimizations that might make your code a little better. Uh, doing vector loads, for instance, might make them run a little better on, on our hardware. Uh, and I, I alluded to this earlier, but it's, it's, it's an important thing to keep in mind when writing code like this. Having extra serial work per thread almost always improves efficiency on things like this. In reduction, I think, I think it's reasonable to expect that that's true, right? Because doing lots of serial work per thread means that I am keeping a running sum, all independent of everyone else, and just doing lots of local additions as opposed to having to do barriers to synchronize with other threads, having to shuffle data amongst threads. You know, that should sound more expensive than just having one thread do its own thing. And it is. And of course, there's many more. I could go on for a long time about how you could make that code better, uh, but I won't. So uh, I wanted to leave time for questions. I hope you have some, or at least more than, than you already asked, uh, whether about the things I just talked about or, or other things you'd care to ask too. So uh, I'll open it up for questions. Thanks.